it's been a little while once again, so I figured I'd try to scrounge up a 50s transistor radio that I haven't done a video on. And this one fits the bill. It's the standard model SR-F22 from 1957. It's one of the very first radios that the standard radio company of Japan produced. Definitely has an unusual grill design. Some like it, some hate it. I think it looks at least nice. The dial has two tiny civil defense triangles on it. And the center looks like it's missing something, but that's how it was made. It's got a little chip on the top, unfortunately. That's probably why I never did a video on this thing, but I think it's in sufficiently nice condition to show off. Hopefully you all agree. This radio still has its original capacitors. When I get into the inside, I'll show you why I haven't messed with that yet, at least. Currently, though, I do plan to just leave this thing alone. I have plenty of working transistor radios. Sounds pretty terrible on music, unfortunately. Can't stay too long, though. Otherwise, Content Match will probably still pick that up. Sounded pretty good on that sports talk station, though. That station is the most powerful one in my area, so it comes through even on radios that have some troubles. This unusual connector here is for the earphone, which I don't have. This style of connector was only used in Japan, and they disappeared by around 1960 or so for the type you more commonly see. And this is a connection for an external antenna, which I again do not have. Take the cover off, you just stick your fingernail in there and carefully pry. And the cover comes off pretty easily. So there's the model number, it's an SR-F22, as I would mentioned earlier. The layout diagram shows you where all the transistors are. And speaking of transistors, you can see this one has very early oval style Hitachi transistors. That really makes this thing special in my book. All six of them are the early style oval transistors. Sometimes you'll see a mix you know, a few will be the older style, particularly the audio output transistors, and then the IF transistors will be the newer cylindrical style. And this one is fully loaded with those beautiful early transistors. And it even has an early style crystal diode, which you can see there. It has a glass body with big end caps on each end. Japan quickly moved to the smaller white glass style diodes, so you only find that in the very early ones. And there's two of those original capacitors, and one more here. This is the one that most likely needs changing, the volume control coupling capacitor. That's generally the first one to go bad. And there's two more over here. Pretty low voltage rated, 6 volts. This one's rated 6 volts as well, as is this one. And the radio runs on 9 volts. I'll definitely put better capacitors in there if I do end up changing them out. 
there's the serial number, 111183, and the final inspection was apparently okay. Takes a standard 9 volt battery, they give both the part number for standard radios 9 volt battery, which probably would have been hard to find in the US, and then the more common EverReady number 216 battery, or equivalent. This style of battery was not yet standard in 1957. There were all sorts of different shapes of battery, particularly the round style batteries. But quickly the transistor radio market standardized on this style of 9 volt battery. Here's an original EverReady model 216 battery. You can see the EverReady 216 battery is about one millimeter thinner than the modern 9 volt battery. Width wise it's pretty much exactly the same but that little bit of extra thickness there can be a real issue for some radios that have a tight fitting battery compartment it can prevent the lid from closing. And here's one of those round style 9 volt batteries that was common in US made transistor radios but uncommon in Japanese ones. Westinghouse used this battery in a lot of their early transistor radios. It's a number 226. Well, thanks for watching.